Well, you know, what's interesting is that consensus is already pretty high. I mean, if you look the, and, and what I think is most interesting, of course, are the month on month numbers, because the year on year, yes, we expect, that, like the market, that the numbers would move lower. Uh, but the reality is there's, there's some statistical base effects starting to come into the picture, given how high the numbers were a year ago. Uh, I think the key question really is that, you know, uh, in, in the very short term consensus, of course, looking from 0.3 to 0.5 percent month on month, that's quite high. So, you know, I think if we exceed that, uh, you know, that, that would be a bit of a concern. But that might sort of contain market worries in the short term, at least. But in the bigger picture, you know, that's still, uh, you know, a, a, a still a significant month on month move. So uh, if anything, that argues the case that, you know, we aren't sort of facing, you know, Fed rate cuts, you know, imminently. If anything, uh, on the upside, we're a little bit more comfortable with market pricing is today versus where we were a few weeks ago, where there was a lot of optimism that rates could be cut quite soon. But in our view, you know, where consensus is, and chances are we'll get number in, you know, quite close to that. Uh, we just think it's quite consistent with our view that the Fed's most probably going to 5.25%, uh, but likely staying there a bit, um, and with any rate cuts not coming before the very end of the year at the earliest. So Manpreet, how do you trade it then? I've spoken with other experts through the course of last week who say valuations just aren't matching fundamentals stateside. They aren't. And, and, and the most you know, obvious trade to us, if you think, is, is the stocks versus bond decision. We've got a bit of an equity market rally, but to us, the risk reward just favors trimming that. Uh, if you've been invested, then this is a great time to sort of lighten up. Um, and the, the opportunity on the bond side is that yields have gone back up. And, and 10 years around what we think is significant resistance, uh, you know, 3.7%. We have struggled a little bit, but an upside surprise or a strong CPI could end up pushing us a little bit higher but in the bigger picture we still think it's a great opportunity to, to lighten up on that equity exposure um, either of course moving it within equities to asia but really moving it to income assets because that move higher in yields thing has improved income yield once again across the board that's an opportunity we we're highlighting quite closely in november december last year but with yields now back closer to those levels uh, we just think that's sort of the real the really interesting opportunity uh, in the equity versus bond space Similar logic on the dollar. We've got a bit of a bounce uh, on the back of the rise in yields. Uh, but again, you know, just playing back to the previous conversation on the yen, I think if we're looking to put sort of dollar weakness trades in place, I think we're getting closer to the point where the risk reward starting to look interesting.